So hello and welcome to the second episode of Nightmare Down Under, the Gear City Let's Play, where we play on Nightmare Difficulty Down Under in Australia. We started in 1900 with our company called Australis. Now it is December 1901. Lots of things have happened in the last episode, so we licensed uh, uh, a car from uh, an English company to, to sell and we sold it uh, for I think a year or so. We also designed the components for our own car and we designed then our own car and here it is the Australis 2 so it's uh, a Phaeton can we actually see it no we have to go to the showroom for that so it has a 77 cc single cylinder engine makes two horsepower eight newton meters of torque top speed of 40 it has some st some stats lots of red where we are terrible but a few things where we are green and if we compare this uh, to the car that we had licensed, then we'll see um, we have one area where we are... M no, we have no areas where we are going to be better. Everything's worse. So lots of stuff that was yellow is here red in terms of the stars. Our dependability is worse. Fuel economy is slightly worse. Handling is slightly worse. And uh, our image is terrible. But it's our own car. It's cheaper to make. We don't have to pay... Uh, royalties and uh, so that's um, what we're going to sell we also we're waiting uh, probably one more turn till we're going to get public based on the success of uh, our own car and then we're going to expand the number of production lines that we have and then we can go on sale with our car in all of Australia okay then let's advance and see what happens so we didn't sell that much so we have to sell for less and we have to sell in more cities we can probably go public with 841 that's I think a nice number so our um, less than stellar sales didn't affect things too much so what I'm going to do is open one more branch in Adelaide give it a bit of a sales boost one Auckland too, and that's probably not that worth it, especially with the import costs. So we're going to have a few more sales, and I'm going to make it a bit cheaper as well. Now these estimations are usually uh, hard to work out, so we have to sort of guess. But what's worth doing is to go public. So we're going to get 850,000 from that. And can we actually get something else? We can issue for a few bonds 40,000 and no one will loan us money I'm not sure this is worth doing 40,000 won't make or break uh, us in any way what we can do now with our almost a million is to upgrade the factory in Sydney to have a, it's a medium upgrade and we can build two extra production lines so that we then have three times the production capacity and then we can sell it for a much lower price than all across Australia and to New Zealand as well. So let's upgrade is ready in four months so it's now going our cash reserves are going to dwindle pretty quickly that's why it was important to have now almost all the cash um, ready uh, for that expansion otherwise uh, yeah all we can do at the moment is uh, wait for things to sell so we still have to go cheaper new component design there's a ladder frame which we can use in the future we can now have a front engine front wheel drive car uh, what we can't have yet is a 12 cylinder engine although they exist and the same for the supercharger so then let's be a bit more radical here. So 34, 46, that sounds radical, 51, so let's go under the 2000, because we want actually now want things to sell. Yep, so that's, that's better. We've almost sell, sold everything. So what we can do now is expand uh, to Sydney, uh, to um, Perth and Auckland as well. And then we, our um, sales will be pushed um, beyond uh, what we can produce so that we're selling off our reserves. 
So even though it's a tiny town, still worth worth doing. I can also put some, or should put some marketing on there, even though just to be realistic. It doesn't affect much at this point, but we of course would do that so that we now have newspaper ads in all our cities. We have a factory upgrade in two months. Yeah, bit of a dip in sales, so let's uh, go a bit lower still. So one month till Sydney is done. So we're now in the red, 115. We have six months to get out of that. So now we can make uh, three times the cars, so 124. So then we have to go to about three times the estimated customers, so 56, so 150-ish would be good by radically lowering the price. I'm going down to this. It's not, it doesn't show in the estimations, but my gut feeling is this is already too cheap. From what I understand in terms of the game. Let's see how good the gut feeling is after all. Yeah, so we sold a lot more, so the estimations weren't that useful actually. We still have a positive cash flow, so we're digging ourselves out of the hole. We can now make full speed gearboxes. And there's a contract for a Sydney commercial fleet. So then we first have to increase the price again. I think by a fair bit. So something like this. So let's check the contract. What do they want? We get an idea maybe. A sedan that has a 35 top speed, but it's in less than a year. So we won't have time to put something together. We can though think to actually start thinking about putting something together. At the moment we're limited by sales capacity. So we, we just went public, but we can raise the first round of bonds based on this very positive cash flow. So we can invest this million and these 371,000 into a new factory. So we upgraded Sydney. And usually the, the first upgrade has a fair cost and the second one is much more expensive. So we, we paid a million for two more lines and now we would have to pay 1.5 million for one more line. So what usually makes the most sense is to have one upgrade, that's the maximum, which we couldn't afford this time, and then uh, it's uh, then redesigning the factory, which will take just much longer. So we have to build a second factory to get more production capacity reasonably quickly. We have a million in bonds. We don't want to take it too much time. So let's say a year. And we can get two production lines uh, within with with this million. A third one would be 1.5 million. We're not going to get anything after we're starting uh, the construction. So with one million bond and the 400,000-ish uh, loan, we can actually build this. So that's what we're going to do. And I'm still going to reduce the technology a little bit so that we are finished in a year because that's then um, when we can be finished with the next next car. And this takes about uh, probably less than 12 months but I think it makes sense to have a decent amount of technology um, so that we have a reasonably efficient production lines. So let's do this and let's get the bank loan and let's get the million in bonds. And we can have it mature a little bit earlier. So that should be that the, that should be sufficient to cover the cost for the factory and the new car. So what would be the next thing to develop? So we have a Phaeton, that's fine. Next one would be the sedan. 
So the dance back then is basically the same that what we announced. So cars with uh, two rows of seats and a roof. We don't have anything with the roof yet, but also we won't fit two rows of seats and an engine onto the very small Wii-based car that we have. In pure game mechanics terms, we could simply design a sedan on our 1.9 meter wheelbase chassis, but I'm um, not going that route uh, with this break from reality. So what we're going to design instead is a coupe. And again, the term back then basically is about the same thing that it is now. So it's a hardtop two-door vehicle with a single row of seats. So we could make a case. We simply use our phaeton and put uh, a box on it instead of just uh, a place where you can sit and a steering wheel. Um, they like performance and handling, but now uh, at this point in time, they simply have to get, uh, they're happy. They, I should be happy to get something with a roof over the head, uh, which is going to be more expensive. And um, again, no competition helps. So 1.9 meter wheelbase. Existing engine, which will have to work hard to make the box move and our existing gearbox uh, without a reverse gear. So you can use the same body in game as for the Phaeton, but that doesn't make sense. So it's rather something like this. So in terms of wheelbase, you could make the case it's the same wheelbase as these, uh, just as with a box over it. And there are a couple of others. So this one, this one, these ones, or this one. So let's go for Let's check what the difference. So cargo 590 liters, drag coefficient 8.8. 8. 612 is a bit better. The top speed 33. I think that could that could be actually an issue. Top speed 33 is the top speed too low. Also 33. 34. So this has of course the, the smallest cargo space because it's lower. And it probably lo it looks a bit like a toy car almost, although you could say maybe they, they sit a bit lower. So these have all 33, this one has 34. And the wheelbase is, I think, roughly the same. So Cirrus and Putri. Yeah, so that doesn't make it make a difference really. Here is one more. It's also 33. Because you, you're going to get a certain penalty um, with too low top speed. Although 33 or 34 is probably not going to be make or break anyway. So then we can go for something we like. So 483, 446. So the other one is better. And here was... This is probably even worse in terms of top speed. Not also 33. So let's... I know what, it doesn't, it doesn't really matter at this point, since we don't have competition. So let's go with this and have some room for uh, future improvement. Are the other ones narrower maybe, because this looks a bit wide. So that's the other so break from reality. Um, but these are all pretty wide, I think. Yeah, I think basically the same, same model. So let's go with this as a compromise um, and then maybe have something larger than for a future revamp. Otherwise, same deal as usual. The lowest acceptable quality and then we work our way up. Again, male clientele. Demographics. Make here make things slightly better, but but they don't we can achieve this by cheaper means. So what do they like? They like performance. So handling. So we go with this. So we don't go to the full edge here, because then s things suddenly get much more expensive. Think they should like reliability, and often they do. Yes, 30, 20, 22, 30. Cargo is not that important. Oh, a little bit does the trick. So utility here. More? Nope. Comfort? Nope. Safety? Nope. 
they don't want safety. They're probably just happy to have a roof over their heads when they are driving. This is also too expensive. So I think that's it. 561 takes 9 months. Factory is ready in 12, so we can adjust that. Making things cheaper again. So 100,000. Uh, that's certainly worth doing. And... So it's $60 more expensive to make, because it has a roof. And otherwise, uh, yeah, it's going to probably going to be equally terrible. But again, it's learning by doing, and we're going to get better just uh, by improving. And we get a top speed of 34, so that's great. So then let's build this um, coupe. And it's a two, but with a coupe body. And that's another thing that I think was common back then. So that you had your chassis, and then you could build all sorts of bodies on top of that. So we're just going to do that and uh, taking our sweet time in the process. Okay, so let's see whether our price adjustment had uh, made a difference uh, to the sales figures. And otherwise, we have simply have to wait till the factory builds till it eats through our cash reserves. Actually, not that badly. So missed sales nine, so we can make slightly more expensive. So I think we have found a nice sweet spot in terms of sales numbers. Okay, so now we're getting the warning. But now we sold a lot less. So here's here seems to be a point where things break. Ah, we're getting a price gouging penalty since our car is cheap to make. So that makes a difference. And now it's gone. So that was exactly that uh, certain kind of threshold. So the, so the material costs are 508, manufacturing costs, uh, so including the factory stuff, uh, 736, total unit costs, including all other overhead, 1303, and then uh, once we're going vastly above that, then there's a sort of artificial penalty uh, applied in game, and we just fell victim of that. Not anymore, so we're slowly selling off our reserves, so it wasn't actually that bad. Um, and Cash stays reasonably constant, so we don't. But well, still going on for nine more months, so it will still be something like five hundred thousand less. And we don't have to ride the edge here uh, in terms of using up all our cash. Another nice side effect of having no competition. Otherwise, all we can do is wait. So things sell off. Factory is in the works. The coupe is in the works. So first year's over. Two new contract requests, Brisbane and Auckland Business Fleet. Let's check what they want. We win the best car of the year, best Phaeton of the year, but it's the only car in Australia, so of course. Um, there is a race somewhere over in Europe, far, far away from us, because there were no flights or anything back then, and I think a journey to Europe would have taken three weeks or so. So... Sales dropped again, probably again, price gouging penalty? No, just did. No idea why, so make it a fair amount of cheaper so that we don't run into this issue again. Yeah, that works. So we sold a thousand vehicle in the first year. There is now the W engine. We can't build one yet, not sure we ever want to. So some of the contracts are aircraft engines and marine engines, so, so these odd engine types maybe for those. And 6-bit gearbox, but of course um, we can't build that yet, a new Phaeton body. What we can do, just for fun, is check, um, did we make the top 50 of sales? Nope, we didn't. How are we in terms of companies? So the biggest company had... Um, Oh, the biggest companies had around uh, 12,000 and then 10,000 last year, and we had just 1,000. So we are here among the smaller car manufacturers. Everything else is ready in four. Reserves are selling up nicely. We can now make a rotary engine, but we're not sure we want to. Our cash reserves are slowly but surely dwindling, but we're also selling stuff quite nicely. So maybe increase the price a little bit. 
Yep, that's still fine. One month till our coupé is ready and the factory is ready and we'll still have something like 350,000 in the bank. So that's awesome. So 138 sales, so we have missed sales. So research complete, factory construction complete, some more contracts. So what we can do now, we can in Melbourne produce a few more Phaetons, so sell 55 more. So maybe something like this and use the other production lines to make the coupe. So we want to sell 115 and it should be more expensive than the Phaeton of course because it has a roof. So here is 27, so this is 30, 60, 90. That's probably too much even, but let's see. Uh, the uh, other estimations weren't that great either. So at the moment we can raise bonds, but not many since we had a negative cash flow from all those uh, activities of building a new factory. So we have to make one, one month of sales. Now we have positive cash flow again. We can uh, sell our Phaeton for less and we also have to make our uh, coupe cheaper. But at least we have positive cash flow and I think that's important for getting a bond. So something like this, maybe. Yeah, so we have now, we can now raise another million in bonds and 400,000 in loans so that we are now um, having uh, a positive result at the end of the month. So we're doing with Melbourne now what we did with Sydney. So we upgrade the factory. So if, well, this is, I think this will actually work. So we have 405,000 in cash. We're making a slight cash flow. This takes six months. We can get 1 million from bonds. We can get 400,000 from the bank and we have 400,000 uh, as our own cash reserves. So we can afford um, upgrading Melbourne uh, with four more lines. And I think we should do that and then we can make things reasonably cheap and sell uh, uh, cars in a fair amount of um, numbers. And it's usually most if uh, most cost efficient to have the maximum upgrade. So that's uh, then worth doing. And let's get the bonds. Yeah, they can be mature in 1911, that's fine. Let's get the loan. So we only have to make uh, 200,000 in uh, six months and that should work with uh, our, our reduced uh, prices. So then we, then we can ask ourselves next car. And we had looked about that earlier. So next highest demand is a regular sedan but that needs a larger wheelbase. So we are going to design something new again. And now we have the option for a ladder frame which was common in the early days of the automobile. It's the strong and cheap solution, but they like handling performance. So if we compare them to the carriage frame, they're much better, slightly more expensive, but definitely worth it. Can now have the uh, front engine front wheel drive, which is cheaper than a little bit cheaper than front engine rear wheel drive, but also much worse. So we stay with the traditional layout front engine rear wheel drive and um, we stick with two live axles with leaf springs. So independent front suspension wasn't, I think, uh, sort of common till the 1920s, maybe the 1930s even, depending on the manufacturer. So wheelbase, what do we want for a sedan? That's not too large, 2.4 meters. Track width, so make it a bit wider. Frame height does strength, but the, carrier, but the new ladder frame is all about strength anyway, so we can uh, keep that actually quite low. What we actually should do is start with an engine that we know how to large how to large uh, the engine bay needs to be. So let's design an engine. 
We can now design a straight engine, so not just single cylinder rotary layout or an electric engine, which is of course very expensive um, and very heavy, and no one wants that. So straight engine, two cylinders are fine. Double the amount what we have, we go with gasoline, flathead, no two strokes, and stay naturally aspirated. So what a displacement should be aimed for, it means which power output should we aim for. So let's first set the rest of the sliders, so we make it longer, wider, heavier. Here we reduce things again, because we want to need to keep it cheap as well. Focus on performance doesn't do much in these olden days anyway. Dependability is actually not the worst thing to do, at least here it doesn't affect uh, the manufacturing requirements. And we can go for some revs and some torque, which is probably even more important. So what do we have at the moment? Two. They were okay. So maybe go for double. The, double the power. Four, maybe five. So something like a 400cc engine. This is square. So under square is usually pretty useful in these old uh, times due to the extra torque. So 528. Always like it when it flips both torque and horsepower here. I don't have to have the extra material quality, so the two, two cylinder engine is much, much smoother than a single cylinder engine since there is at least some counterbalance. It's not perfectly balanced, uh, not, not by far, but it's simply better than having one cylinder going about uh, on, its, on its own, so that makes sense. What do they value in sedans? So they like safety, they like fuel economy. So that's maybe something we also should invest some extra effort into. So let's go back to 528 and increase fuel economy. So 527, how much extra would we have to... 525, 527, but here we're going to be quite expensive. So 525 in a 500cc two-cylinder engine, so it's more than double the power. It's not cheap, but it doesn't have to be, uh, since we can then charge a bit more for the sedan. Uh, six months is probably fine, it's not that expensive. And I think these are good values, and that's then what we would build uh, the chassis around. So it's our engine inline two four hundred or oh, five hundred uh, four hundred ninety two cc in six months. So then we know how sh large the chassis should be. So the same settings. It should fit. What we should have also checked is whether the engine fits the existing um, smaller chassis, it fits. Okay, then we are lucky, because then we can start mix uh, to uh, mix and match. Oh, front, rear, leaf spring, leaf spring. So making engine fit shouldn't be any issue. So 2.4 meters wheelbase for our sedan, a bit narrower, but also a bit wider than we had. Short, narrow engine bay, everything else. Start again with low settings and then work our way up. And we stay within the six month without too many uh, development costs. So do, uh, since we're going to be limited by the production capacity again, 
because we have to now uh, redesign a factory. Also borrow some lines from our other cars to make the sedan. I'm keeping durability low here due to keeping the manufacturing requirements low. And braking is useful to simply go to, to maximum with. So how, how to balance performance and handling and comfort. So they want both. So luxury, performance and handling. So we can aim to keep comfort and performance equal. So similar to what we did for the Phaeton. So again, stability trades a bit of performance for a lot of comfort. And then we compensate for more comfort. And that we... So here we're having a... We're running into the seven months time. So this looks, I think, quite nice. This is not too expensive, even going to the, to the right here. And then we have equal emphasis on comfort and performance. Uh, so that's basically what uh, the buyers of a sedan want. And if we were to increase this further, then we are quickly running into seven months, which we don't want. So we keep the project cost reasonable. Okay, this looks nice. So then let's have our 240 meter wheelbase. It's our first ladder frame. And gearbox. So we had a two, uh, two speed. Let's just make the same again. So I can go and redesign, which is not a redesign. It simply opens uh, the editor here with um, the same settings. We add a reverse gear because the sedan is going to be a bit heavier than what we have at the moment. So we can actually check. So this is over a ton. These are usually very conservative. So this that's 1.3 tons, 1.4 almost. Uh, probably going to be ending up more like around 1.1 or 1.2. But anyway. So here having a reverse gear makes sense. So then let's calibrate top speed. So 40 regardless of car body. 41. 40, so this is a sweet spot, so somewhere in the middle. Excellent. So that's then the new gearbox. So it's a two-speed, non-synchronized. And it should be, of course, finished in six months, not in 12. That was left over from um, the redesign. So it's a two-speed non-synchronized with a reverse gear and we're going it's also going to be finished in six months okay then we can advance further now we're going to burn through our two million uh, pretty quickly i suspect have to make sure that stuff sells so the phaeton slightly cheaper the coupe needs to be much cheaper more demand for a coupe in europe but we don't have that, of course, so this goes down. Do we get a penalty here? Ah, we're getting low engine smoothness penalties due to the single cylinder, so that's why we sort of have to um, sell it for much less, since the things are penalized. Or simply produce less. So that we so I think this amounts to yeah, one, one production line. And then we can sell more of our Phaeton too. But this wasn't the best decision to make the uh, coupe due to the penalty in terms of um, engine smoothness. And that's the downside of the single cylinder. But anyway, Still going to make a nice profit on those. Yeah, so this works. So we sell 234 Phaetons and the coupe, say we sell slightly more with plenty of reserves to, to sell off. So that's uh, now I think stable. And no one cares about having a roof. They rather uh, want to have um, a smooth engine than a roof over the head. Let's just see what the press says about the to coupe. So the competition has gotten a little bit more heated. Well, not here since we're the only ones. And um, 
the reviewer is happy for the coffee that they got because it's a real sleeper. It will put you to sleep uh, with uh, two horsepower and a top speed of 34. At least we didn't get the top speed penalty. And also it can uh, have an appalling uh, torque. Borderline acceptable handling qualities for a, a coupe. It lacks the basic features you expect in a toy car. It has plenty of space, at least something. Stuff still falls off on the dashboard. And it's one of the worst vehicles on the market. We should be ashamed of releasing such garbage and immediately recall all models. But they love the fuel economy. We still don't value uh, the health or the life of our customers. Um, but it's the best coupe they've ever driven, probably, because it's the only one you'll have ever driven if you are in Australia. So that works. Okay, sales are now nicely stable. Can probably increase the price for the Phaeton slightly. Since we are selling off reserve, so yeah, so we basically have to throw uh, the coupe away and people still want to buy Phaetons. Burning through our cash, but not too quickly. Okay, we can reduce the price again. Um, cars. We're selling, uh, we're now making more than we can sell. New contract requests, award best cars of the year, ended funding for a race, which we didn't take place in, two more racing series somewhere in far away countries, more competition, but not here. So next month we're going to get the Melbourne upgrade so that we can sell our Phaeton for even less. Can probably re start preparing for that. And we can also start developing the sedan. Okay, we're now in, in the red again. But that shouldn't be too much of a, of, a deal, of a deal since the production ended. And this looks fine. Factory upgrade complete. So then we can... So if we make thing... If we have so we're actually starting out to something like the middle class already so we wouldn't have actually needed the addition additional production capacity but i didn't expect that we would sell so little of the of these coupes um so 47 if i increase price dramatically 55 that doesn't really change things that much how about here 148 155 doesn't do that much either 180. Ah, okay. Here is just a missing, missing bar of those. So then let's make it even cheaper and produce some more. And while we do that and have some time to play around with that, we now can design our sedan. Medium wheelbase. 500 cc two-cylinder engine, two-speed gearbox with a reverse gear. Let's select some car bodies. So here's a box that's I think pretty similar to our uh, coupe. 935. We don't need that much space in front. 855. So this one is better. Although this one has two doors. Let's assume our sedan has four. So 855, these are probably more like full-size versions. 919, this I think looks pretty good. Fancy roof, 958. So the clock wood is larger. Or the Hemuzet, 935 versus 58. So this has a bit more space. Yeah, so then this is it. This is our sedan. Again, cheap is what we want. No competition, so we can afford to be terrible. And with our skills, these sliders probably don't matter that much anyway, because even for something like um, handling or reliability where we invested something into, um, we got 
terrible scores from the magazine. So we still have to build our skills further. So they want probably reliability. Everyone wants that. 24. 26. Cargo, probably two. 27. But not that much. I suspect they want safety, yes. 28. That's it. Token handling, 29. And some interior quality, maybe? No, not really. This doesn't affect anything. Okay. So we left the 26 overall. That's okay. So that's going to be our um, sedan. Development time. Yeah, I think that's... We probably will be able to borrow one or one or two production lines anyway, so we can actually be a little bit faster, although I'm conscious again. No, we don't. We don't. Let's see whether we actually want to build something or not. So this 11 months is 400,000, 12 months is 250,000. I think another month or so doesn't make or break anything. So let's go with this. And this is more expensive in terms of material cost than what we have. So, yeah, 200 more, so this is the definitely more more upscale. So, let's put the sedan into production. What's the name? So it has 5 horsepower, so it's the 5. Well, it's a 5 sedan. And there will be uh, probably other body types at some point. Alright. So then we first need to uh, have a positive cash flow again, and then we can think of some more financing, maybe. Something like this. So we are still producing too many um, phaetons, and the price decrease for the coupe had hardly any difference. There's the 15-cylinder engine, which we can't build yet, not that we want to. Okay, so then we can make the coupe a bit more expensive again and so I'm making 124 here. So I'm making that's 110 ish more. One idea could be to stop Sydney. Let's check the factory operating costs. Yeah, Sydney is much more expensive than Melbourne to produce in. So what we can think of, simply saying Sydney for the time being, I'm going to shut that down. Build 335, um, and I don't need that many actually. Maybe one less here. And then once we get our sedan, we're going to put that into production in Sydney. How about some bonds? We can raise bonds, a million. And we can get a back loan, bank loan of 450,000. So if we ever want to put more into production, so Melbourne had now the big upgrade, seven lines is fine. And for a pretty decent uh, unit cost, so 176, whereas Sydney is much more expensive and has three lines. So what we need to do next is to redesign Sydney. So three lines with um, decent technology. Four lines. So we can get 1.5 um, from bonds and loans. And this takes uh, 1.5 years, so 18 months, a bit, a bit more. So cash flow 26, but probably a bit more, times 18, let's say times 20 is 500,000. So we can, go, we can probably get away with something like this. 
so that we get five lines in Sydney, so that we'll have one million from bonds, 1.5 oh, plus 0.5 from loans, and then we'll make we need to make for 500,000 uh, until then. We also will have the sedan to put into production by then. That's some extra uh, money, and I think that's something we will be able to do. So, and it's also a bit longer than um, 1.5 years. So this is now um, 19, 19 months. No, uh, 17 months. Yeah. So that's something we should be able to afford. And let's redesign Sydney. Let's get one million of bonds. Maybe mature 1913 so that they don't become due all the time uh, all at the same time and let's get the loan in 60 months we also stop uh, I have to stop paying for one of those loans but that's okay all right so we have some cash that we can now burn through and we have to make up some for some shortfall through car sales but we should be able to do that Sedan is in the works and factory redesign is in the works. So, yeah, so we're still selling off uh, sedans and the price increase has not really made a difference. We still have produced too many phaetons, so here the price decrease hasn't affected anything. So, could pay a little bit more expensive. So, if we take the price. Um, development, so yeah, let's give it two clicks, three clicks more, and then probably one less. And we only have to make 280. So that's it. So we have a bit of overcapacity actually, but this will change in 10 months' time. So factory costs, yeah, 163 are very nice unit costs. One thing we should also do, and that may help our sales issues a bit, is to recondition the branches and to also um, to give them more sales resources and more dealer resources. I think that's one thing we should have done a bit earlier, actually. Um, so Perth doesn't really matter, so it can be a bit more cheaper. So we get two and three stars, because this has a big impact. So sales brochures and also number of dealerships. But with the other cities, we can go a bit more to town. So two and a half, three and a half. Same for Brisbane. The extra cost isn't that much, but the effect is disproportional as we would expect if you just have a few more salespeople and print some more brochures that will have a big effect on things it's not that expensive and then melbourne one or two biggest cities we're going for four stars in sales efficiency and three stars in dealership growth so what I assume in terms of dealerships is so we have now eight that we ne don't necessarily have eight in Melbourne. It's Melbourne plus uh, the entire surrounding area and same for anything else. So that's why these numbers, uh, well, that's the way how I make sense of these numbers for myself. So this should have a big effect on things. We have plenty of reserves, so that should uh, not lead to missed sales. And let's see what this effect is. Yeah, so now we're selling plenty of coupes and plenty of phaetons. That's much better. So we need 360 phaetons. So we can actually restart Sydney. And we need uh, 100, a bit less pays yeah so that's fine once the sedan comes online in nine months uh, then we'll have to uh, increase the price of the phaeton a bit maybe we can 
stock up on uh, some reserves. So that's worth it. And I think now things are looking much better in terms of monthly monthly cash flow. So we're actually selling 102 coupes. So let's build some uh, reserves of those as well. And despite our building activity, uh, we have a, a, just a slightly negative cash flow. So that works extremely well. And yeah, sh probably should have uh, changed the um, branches a bit earlier. So we're actually selling more phaetons uh, than we produce because sales are going up mainly for one reason. We are having now much more popularity of gasoline than ethanol. And of course, um, so more people want to buy a gasoline powered cars. And that's a part of that sales increase apart from the cities growing and the per capita income uh, growing. We can, what we haven't checked at the start of the year is, are we in the top sale? Yeah, we are in the top 50 sales, so 3,300. And actually on the first page of two. So that's awesome. Probably not yet in all time sales. No, nope, but this might change since we're now selling a fair number. And we're almost breaking even despite having our, our construction going on. So again, we're building up some reserves of stuff and then that's uh, useful to have when the sedan comes online. What I can already do is increase prices a little bit so that we sell less and we have more reserves to bridge the time between uh, the release of the sedan and when the new redesigned factory is ready. And this hardly had, had hardly any effect on, on sales, actually. So that's good. So that means some more price increases. Sedan in four. Whoa, Phaeton sales had almost caught up to production. So we can have a healthy price increase. The coupe is probably now a bit too expensive, but let's see. Sedan in three. Okay, so we're going to have uh, we're going to have the first request for the benefits and pension system, and now they want to have uh, one percent of wages paid in direct employee benefits, uh, and that's fine. We are doing well financially, so no reason uh, to stop that. Yep. So that things dropped, but I think this is useful to have for the time being that we can cut production lines uh, of the things we're currently building uh, in two months' time once we get our sedan. And yeah, we don't uh, have big cash flow issues. So this is great. We can now make V engines. Could we haven't been able to do that so far? No new contracts for us. We win best uh, best coupe in the entire world. That probably doesn't take into account engine smoothness, but anyway. Uh, that's nice. So racing series ends some new competition in faraway countries. So next month we're going to get our sedan. So we have some healthy reserves. Now we have to put the car onto the market to give R&D something else to do. Let's first check, check the press. What do they think of our five sedan? Any new trial is, is, is a big deal to some. We have a growing fan base who just love the vehicles. That's great to hear. So they're impressed by the performance. Uh, so 39 top speed is fine and the two cylinder uh, 400cc engine is also fine. And they don't like the um, torque, the holding capacity. They like the handling. It's not comfortable, seats like lawn chairs. And they don't know, don't even know what the dash is made of. Features, uh, who needs them? Not, not much cargo space, but it's not that bad either. It's poorly made but it's designed with 
uh, longevity in mind. So it's good that our skills now finally translated to also the car being actually good. And we got an impressive fuel economy. So, so the engine is actually pretty excellent so that we have a uh, nice performance, but also nice fuel economy. And it's not perfectly safe, but quite close. So it's a delightful vehicle and I hope it's a huge success. Yeah, we hope the same. And uh, how this will turn out actually is then something we're going to see in the next episode. So I hope this was interesting how to see uh, well, how you can get your own company going, even though it's somewhere in a sandbox in Australia in a faraway country. But anyway, um, and uh, I suspect next episode will be equally interesting uh, when we simply try uh, to get going on the larger scale, uh, having more cars, uh, selling more cars in the cities and uh, yeah, seeing when uh, any kind of competition may arrive at this point will certainly happen. So all I can say now is uh, thanks for watching and see you in the next episode.